Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dinkle Dork, and today we're going to be talking about how to create new glyphs. This is a viewer submitted request. Someone was having some challenges with creating new glyphs, so I figured I'd just go ahead and make a tutorial for it. The tools you'll be needing for this tutorial are Heidi SQL, WDBX Editor, Latix MPQ Editor, and Stone Harry's Spell Editor. DBCs we'll primarily be using are Glyph Properties DBC, Spell DBC, and Item DBC. First thing first, we actually have to have a spell effect in mind. So for me, what I'm going to do is, is I want to add, this is just a hypothetical glyph, I want to add a glyph that reduces the cast time of Polymorph by 0.5 seconds. So what do we do first? Well, there's three glyph spells in the spell DBC. One is for crafting, one is for actually applying the glyph, and the other one is for the actual spell effect. We're just gonna find some pre-existing glyphs, okay? If you wanna make a minor glyph, copy some minor glyphs. If you wanna make a major glyph, copy some pre-existing major glyphs. So for me, I've got glyph of polymorph in mind because I'm just gonna make a major glyph. And we're just gonna go ahead and right click, duplicate, and we're gonna put in a number that we care about doesn't overwrite any other existing spells. And we're just gonna duplicate each one of these for our new glyph. And it looks like sometimes you get a bit of an error. Probably got that error because I was trying to create a ID that already existed, but that's okay. We're gonna go back and fix that real quick. So this cogwheel is the glyph that does the spell effect. This is the glyph that, or sorry, this is the spell that actually applies the glyph. And this is the crafting spell. First, I'm going to look at my planned glyph and I'm going to rename it reduced cast just so I can distinguish it. And you can name it whatever you want, right? Know that this is probably the worst naming convention ever, but whatever. I can always change this if I want. I'm probably not going to be implementing this anyway, but deuces, cast time of your polymorph spell by 0 0.5 seconds. Great. We're just going to copy that description over to each one. Now we have our spell descriptions out of the way. Let's go ahead and look at the effect spell first. Not anything particularly interesting about the base effects of this spell. So we're just moving into effect one, two, and three. Obviously, you're going to want to clear out anything that's here in spell effects three or two and just focus on spell effects one. Typically speaking with glyphs, you're going to be targeting the caster. And some of the important aspects of glyph creation are these spell class masks, and I'll talk more about those. Those are basically needed to convey to the server that I want this effect to only affect these spells. For this one, we're gonna go into spell flat modifier which is 107, and the MISC value determines the different type of modifiers. Let's go ahead and look those up. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below for where I get this. But I basically use this forum that was created on GitHub, and I use it as a reference point. So if we go down to spell effect 107, which is flat modifier, you can see the, the various effects that MISC value A has. 10 is cast time. So we're just going to go ahead and go with cast time. Eleven's cooldown. So next we're going to want to modify the base points to be, and just remember that these are in milliseconds. So five oh negative 501. If it was positive, we'd be adding 0.5 seconds to the spell. If negative, we're taking it away. The reason why we're doing negative 501 rather than negative 500 is because we have this one here. This basically, if you change this to this, you'd have a variable cast time. <laughs> and we don't want that. So um, so one means that it consistently reduces the cast time of the spell by, by 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. Okay. And then we want to go over here into spell class masks. And we're basically going to go row by row, just basically looking for the correct spell or spells that we want to go ahead and modify. You're probably wondering, why did the original spell for Polymorph have summon water elemental on it? Scripted spell, and it really didn't matter what the misc value was. It was probably used for something else originally, but 
I was actually only looking at spell class mask two. I should have been looking at one. If you can't find the spell that you're looking for, then just go ahead and do the drop down menu for all three of those looking one by one. And here we have the polymorph spell. So this one is the class, uh, this is the spell mask for polymorph. All versions of polymorph. Go ahead and hit save after you've modified that. Next, we're actually gonna do one of the DBCs here. So open up WDBX editor, find your DBC files, go to glyph properties.dbc, choose Wrath of Lich King or whatever. And for this, we can actually copy whatever entry, doesn't matter too much. The spell icon you could set to something completely different if you wanted to, but in reality, it doesn't really affect anything. So we copied an entry. We have our ID, which we're going to be using in our next spell. We have the spell ID of the actual effect, which is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 1001018. And then this flag is 0 or 1. 0 indicates it's a major glyph. 1 indicates it's a minor glyph. If you have other numbers, because there's a couple, I have no idea what they do. It's undocumented. Then spell icon, like I said, you could just do whatever. Go ahead and hit save. Go back to spell editor. We're going to go to the second spell on our list, the one that has a scroll on it. Then in this misc value A, we're going to put the ID number for the glyph, which is 912. Hit save. Don't mess with the spell class masks here because that's just a default value. Then we're going to move on to the actual crafting spell. You can mess with cast time if you want, spell visual, you can add a totem. So in this case, you actually need a virtuoso inking set. So effects, create item, leave all this blank, and then item type is actually the item entry. So we're gonna go into high SQL real quick. We're going to find the original polymorph item. We're gonna right click it. We're gonna duplicate row with keys. You're gonna add a custom number to it. And we're gonna rename it to casting speed. You can modify different things about this glyph as well when you're actually allowed to use it, which is level 15. If you wanted to make it level 60, you could. How many stacks of it you can have at one time. And then of course, we're gonna put the spell ID here. And this is the spell ID for the application spell, which for us is 1001019. And again, that's for the spell that has a scroll looking icon. All right, great. So now that we have this number for the entry, we're gonna go ahead and copy that over and put it here on the create item item type. Hit save. Go over to the items tab. These are the required reagents. So 43126 is ink of the sea. And the other one is something else that I'm not gonna look up, but you just require one of each. If you want to change that, you can. If you want to change the icon, you can do that as well but we're just gonna go ahead and hit save and we'll export these tables. Open up import export, hit export. Make sure that spell is checked. Sometimes it takes a minute to actually have it populate. Hit the export checked DBC files. Close down your client, close down your server. up Latix MPQ editor and open up the MPQ that has your DB files in it. For me, it's patch Y. This is where I keep the spell.dbc. I'm going to go ahead and drag spell DBC into this MPQ. Close. We're going to go drag it over to our server's DBC file, which I have pinned. One thing else that we should probably do as well is update our item DBC. Sometimes certain spell effects like enchantments won't work until you actually update this DBC. So let's go ahead and do that. So go to your server folders, go to item DBC, open it up with WDBX editor, go to the tools button, Wrath of Lich King item import, hit connect, drop down to Acor world or whatever database you're using for item template. Look for item template, use the template of your choice. For Azeroth core, you use Trinity. Hit load, save. We're gonna go ahead and put that in our MPQ as well. Start up the server, start up the client. 
ahead and log into the character that you're testing this on. Please keep in mind that if you're testing this by learning the spell rather than applying it to the spell itself, the glyph will end up in the same place always. So make sure you add it to an item first. Let's go ahead and add the item to our inventory. Just go ahead and check the casting time currently of Polymorph Turtle, which is 1.5 seconds. Right click the glyph, apply the glyph. You guys know that. I have a weird icon that I decided to use for this. Just ignore that. And then as you can see, our polymorph spell has been reduced to a one second cast time. Obviously the other thing that you're gonna wanna do if you want is you can either add this to a recipe or add it to the NPC trainer. So that's the, the final step. We're just gonna go ahead into, just go into NPC trainer. I've done this in other videos before, so I'll just go over it briefly. You're going to find the spell ID for the original Polymorph spell, which is 56600 because that's the creation spell. Can't find the glyph spell that you're looking for? Just find another glyph. It doesn't matter. In fact, just any glyph item. So ink of the sky 57712 because definitely have to learn that from the trainer. As you can see, it costs 95 silver. This is the required skill line, which is inscription, required skill rank, required level, all that fun stuff. You can just duplicate this row with keys and modify these values as you see fit. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the glyph system. Just remember to add the uh, glyph properties.dbc to your MPQ as well. That's probably why this showed up on a different icon is because I made this spell earlier to test it out. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Subscribe if you want to continue seeing videos like this one, and I will see you guys on the other side of Azeroth.